Hey hey, welcome back to the channel, it's awesome that you're tuning in, because in this video we are going to take a close look at the new Super Console X, the Cube Edition. It's actually not a cube, but yeah, it's kind of weird. Nevertheless, I wanted to take a close look at this new model, what it brings to the table. So let's be clear, so nowadays we do have like these same kind of weird looking boxes, absolutely, like, it just says like Super Console Retro Video Game Console, that's it, like, they're reusing this system or better this box for every single system. And it's kind of interesting to be honest, but also kind of cheapo. The metal a little bit gives it away what it is. So here we do have like the Super Console X3. It's more like a NES Mini that has like beefed up. So we also have like the, over, the overview of the specification list over here. Super Console X3, X3 it comes with the S905 X3, the Mali G31 MP2 GPU, 4 gigabytes of RAM, 30 gigabytes of eMMC memory, or better said, that's something we're not going to use, of course, because it runs on MEL, like great manual, but a lot of explanation how everything works. But well, let's see what we're going to get, because when it comes to these devices, oh boy. So I really love the heading these stickers, like attention, and the reason why, because there's nothing in here, but there's basically the configuration of one dongle USB for two controllers. Quite interesting, I really love the configuration because you have only like two ports that you're needing if you want to have like a four player configuration. The overall controller quality is way better than the first generation. Like the D-pad is a little bit sturdy but it feels quite nice and I can tell you if you want to play some fighting games these things are not bad. Also, when you're trying to basically like use the ABXY, I'm always doing this, the test like this, this is the wicked button test. You can just feel it's not super bad quality. Also, when it comes to the rubberized joysticks, they're actually like rubberized and with the cheap to the cheap cheap controllers, they are like made fully made out of plastic. And overall, not bad at all. Then we have like box number two and here we find everything that we're going to need. Think about the power supply, HDMI cable, everything is in here. Hey, it even gives me like a free, very cool looking keychain. Or is it a keychain? What is it? Yeah, it's just a keychain. <laughs> it's really cool. I can tell you this one goes into my crane machine. Lol, <laughs> what happened there, man? <laughs> But in the second box, we're going to get ourselves like the products that we're going to need. An HDMI cable and power supply. These power supplies are way better nowadays, but it comes without an on and off switch because the system itself has an on and off switch. Yeah. Now it sounds maybe from like, hey, Wicked, why are you talking about the switch itself? Because this is something they don't have with every single box. This is more like a rare thing. So we have like the remote because this thing runs on Android. And yeah, take consideration, it's like a very old Android version. So don't expect a lot from it. You can watch on Netflix, but the device are rooted. So you don't have full HD and 4K. And then of course we have this tiny micro SD card. So where all the super console models are basically based on Android, I must say the Cube Edition is kind of looking like a cool version. Like it's an, let's say an NES only on steroids. So then we have like the Cube X3 and yeah, this is the new version. Also with the older version, we do have like four USB ports at the front. So absolutely a great addition. And for me, like this is, I think one of my favorite ones when it comes to like giving a little bit of a console feeling. Come also with this very big warning sticker that everybody needs to see, so do not plug or unplug the USB controller while powering on. Oh, okay. So at the back we're going to get all of the connections. Then we have like the AVL port over here, then we have like an USB through the door port, then we have the SD card that I was putting a sticker on, I don't know what's going on over here, but yeah, okay. So I <laughs> already broke the seal. But then we have like the HDMI connection over here, RG45 for the internet, and now we have the input for the 12 volt power supply. And I already mentioned the on and off switch over here. But let's bring the old cube to the party and let's do a quick comparison. Okay, so the first thing that it indeed like changed out is that we're basically going to get like a different name at the front. I'm happy they did this, otherwise it's going to be quite confusing. Both have like the same kind of like setup at the front with the four USB ports. So the case in general is in my opinion the same. We do have lights a little bit different when it comes to this carbon or they just put the sticker in a different way. But that's basically where we're going to get the same sticker at the left, at the right there's nothing. And at the back we're going to get stuff like the same kind of lineup when it comes to the connection. Only though having with the new version over here we have like the usb port at the back so it's kind of cool that we have an extra port also when you're looking at the depth where the sd card is in like the older version over here it also has like a completely different light way you can see like this sd card maybe me like a little bit nitpicky it's sticking out a little bit 
But from the outside, they didn't really change a lot besides having like one extra USB port 3.0. I think it's an upgrade, that's pretty damn cool. But let's take a close look at the system itself. But okay, so when you're looking at this like, layout, I must say that it looks quite nice to be honest. And it's the new uh, MUL like layout, by the way, for the people who are wondering. But when you're looking at the game compatibility, there is so much stuff you can basically add to this and play and have a lot of fun. But when it comes to certain platforms that we're going to test out in this video, you will see we do have like some problems. 3 is one of those. Like it's absolutely like a mixed bag simply because these systems are made very cheaply with cheap chips. And yeah, let's take a close look at it and let's see what we can basically play on this. We're just going to start off with some Sega 32 wigs. I really love the system. I do own myself like the original hardware. But playing it like this is so much, I say, in different and <laughs> experience. And again, of course, a lot of these things are very difficult to find if you're going to get yourself like working hardware. So experiencing some Sega 32 wigs this way is another great way to go to. Soul Feast, another great game of the Sega CD. I personally really love the Sega CD for audio, of course. Some games look a little bit better. It was such a fun game, but absolutely amazing music. Yeah, upgrades! Yeah! So next system I want to try out is Sega Saturn. It's a new addition to these cheaper boxes, but when it comes to Sega Saturn, you will have like another great experience. Some games are playable, take that in consideration. We can see right when you're looking at the right top corner with the FPS, you can see like it runs like 40, maybe 50. If you don't notice it, when it comes to the FPS, some of the games will look playable in a certain way. But again, it's quite interesting to see that with these low-end boxes, we can even play some Sega Saturn with some mixed performance. And even up to 40 now. So it runs a little bit slow in my opinion, but how do you... Doesn't sound that bad. Stuff that happens a lot with these devices that we're going to like seeing games that are basically like not booting up. And this error occurs with a lot of these devices. A little bit of a bummer. So the rest are like a lot of stuff that you just need to fix yourself. So take that in consideration. But let's find some game that actually works or boots up at least. All right, so let's move on to some Dreamcast. And also here you can see like it will like hit a 60 FPS, but it is not like a super stable frame rate. Also the audio sounds a little bit messed up some games. Now it even dips down to 35. I think where these boxes shine the best is basically with the old school stuff. Think about some old school Neo Geo Arcade. They have like so much better like performance with the old school stuff. Especially when you're looking at some other system that we're going to take a close look at. Of course Neo Geo is a system that runs on almost like most of these boxes great. Okay, another problem I've noticed with these systems, like some of them are not configured correctly and that's something you should do yourself. So when pressing start, here you can see like I can move two characters at the same time. It's kind of funny to be honest. <laughs> it's most kind of cool. But the main problem is like this is more of the problem with the controller. So what we need to do is reset the system and we need to go into the emulator software. So what we need to do is basically holding the A button or the B in this time. Then we need to go to advanced game options. So the main problem is that we need to set this thing to a different emulator. Uh, MAME 2010 is one of those that works pretty damn good. So what you can do also is like getting the bezels up. For example, putting them on yes over here. Let's put up the system again. And now you will notice that we don't have the issue with the two controllers. And also we have like a 4 by 3 express ratio in combination with banners. One of those fixes, that's something you always need to know like with these things. You need to always like tinker with it. This looks way better. I don't have the problem with the start anymore. But the problem with the two controllers is just the configuration of having two dongles and one, or two, one dongle two controllers. And also non-stretch looks so much better. But again, this would be things that they would automatically like fix. But unfortunate, every single time I test something like this out, it faces the same problem. All right, so next up I wanted to try out some Mortal Kombat, but think about it like if you're looking at some other boxes, think about a PC-based one with Battle Sierra. We have an option to play Killer Instincts and some other cool games and that's not available on this. So basically Mortal Kombat is the ultimate test and that's the only thing that actually like challenges the box itself. Oh, keypad itself is not bad at all. 
he was just standing in front of me. And you know how these games need to be played the best way. If he's doing this, you just need to punch him in the balls. Ultimate finish. Oh yeah. Alright, so the next test I wanted to do is of course Dolphin Blue of a Thomas Wave. Because this is an absolutely like horrible game for some of these emulator boxes to run. You can run, it is not even stable 60 FPS, it struggles. It struggles, absolutely. It isn't even like the hard part to emulate. And we get into the hard part, where we're going to have a lot of stuff going on on this display. Here we go. You can hear the audio is like also not great at all. So it can be like an optimization problem. But in the end, like these boxes are not super powerful. Alright, so next up I wanted to play some PlayStation, but like PlayStation 1 is a system that runs perfectly on these like boxes. Even the first generation didn't have any problems with this. Take consideration upscaling it to higher resolution. There we go, have like an issue because these boxes are not powerful and rough to do that. But if you just want to play some old school PlayStation 1, it runs just fine. So when it comes to PlayStation Portable, you will see that the games struggle. It depends also like what kind of let's say game you're going to play. Tekken and a lot of like two-dimensional games are like running okay and to the point that they are playable, but they will have like a lot of dips and a lot of problems, which you can see over here. But I can tell you if you're going to hook this thing up to a very big television, holy shit, what's going on with the screen? You know, like absolutely unplayable so let me show what i mean so when you're going into the settings here you will see like everything has been put to let's say everything like frame skipping have been set on so this means you're not going to get the full speed of the game if it even like runs faster what you can do is like change it out to one times psp but also they already implemented the speed ups so that means like they implemented the speed ups to getting a little bit better performance most of the time it will look not great at all but again, like even like the filtering has been set to off. Everything they can do, they already implemented this. So let's continue with the one time. But you can see like it doesn't even matter. I think these things they should not even like bother like putting places portable on this. So let's get into the last part of this gaming testing. And with N64, it's the same story that we've seen many times before. You do see like a shitload of glitching going on, depending on what kind of emulator you're running on the back end. It's still a problematic with a lot of games. Of course, cruising the USA is a little bit more of like ultimate test for me. Because if you're going to get yourself like in cheap PC, you can run this game without any problem or they will run pretty damn good and now. And with these cheap boxes, they should at least like filter, like put a list online where you can see like what games are playable. Most of the time the launch titles, I like think about a Diddy Kong Racing or something like that, but most of these games are absolutely unplayable. It's a no-go for me when it comes to N64. So when you're looking at the case, I personally really love the design what I mentioned before, so they need to put the sticker in the right position. So let's open it up. I'm thinking I need to remove the feet over here, the rubbery feet, because underneath we'll find a couple of screws or a lot of screws. So that is something we're going to do. We're going to rip it apart because I wanted to see what is in the inside, because that's maybe the most interesting thing about this. So by opening up, I must say they did some changes when it comes to the main board itself. But also when you're looking at this, we have seen like all of those Android or Super Consoles or like typical Android boxes slapping into in just a new case. They did something new and exciting, to be honest. Here you can see like they have like a completely redesign of the main board and even implemented like a way better fan and cooling. Like how it's comparable with the older model, that is something we can do maybe with a video in the future. But for now, I just wanted to take a close look at this. Also, when you're looking at the overall, let's say, the quality of the build, I think it's done very well. Here it shows in the deed like it's the S905X3 version 12 or something, made in 2022, 0805, all right. So basically when you're looking at it, they are trying to improve it. The only thing I wonder is like this thing gives it cooling, but where does it get this fresh air? Because there is a ventilation over here, which you can see, but it is very limited. There was like a connection over here and four pin, it goes into the main board that I basically like unplugged for opening it up and that's basically what we're going to get in the inside we can remove we're going to remove the main board and just see what is underneath if it's really the chip that you say it is always remove the SD card without the first time you're going to like ruin the SD card or break it let's see if I removed every screw yep there it is 
So this is basically the main board. When you're going to remove it, we're having like the chips over here. So the configuration of this board is quite interesting. Let's see if I can basically remove it with my fingers. Yes, we can. Okay, so let's remove the fan. And let's see what is underneath. Ooh, the way they did it is completely like way better. They have like this gigantic like thermal pad on here where we're normally having like a couple of them or something, but they did do improvement over there. Let's remove this connector. So we do have like RAM chips at the back, but also at the front. And then we have like the S905 X3 chip AM Logic over here, our big friend that we've seen many times before. And this is the EMMC storage. So this is basically what we're going to get. So let's put this thing back together. But the configuration, how this thing looks is kind of cool. The Super Console, I'm just going to say it, X Cube X3. Nah, that sounds kind of weird. The thing is like, it's kind of interesting to see like what they're actually going to do with this. Like they try to improve it and improving, I mean like when it comes to certain parts in the inside. So at this point, they are basically like releasing over and over the same kind of chipset, only in a different case. For the people who didn't know, now you know. I think the Cube is just a different lineup of the Ken Hank Super Complex devices that we have seen in the last couple of years. And that is basically for what it is. It is an improvement of the older version, but well, maybe if you want to, we can do like a side-by-side -side comparison, showing you the differences between the systems. When you're looking at the outside, there's not a lot of difference, and that is basically what we're also going to get. The same stuff in a different package. That's basically what they're doing all of the time nowadays. Emulation performance, yeah, I must say like it's also the same thing. The X3 chip has a lot of potential for the money most of the time, but it also has like a lot of flaws. I want to thank you for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think of this and it would be great to see you in the next video. So don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell.